Hey everyone, Whitney Ullman here, and I'm so excited because today on the show we have Remember Jones, and this is super cool. Hey, I know. <laughs> yeah. I always do the raves to roof thing. I don't know. So you did the piece, I'm always like, hey. <laughs> but, uh, we're here. So you're going to be in Atlantic City performing. I know you perform all over, but we have the North to Shore Festival that's going to be taking up basically a whole month in New Jersey. But we have a week in New Jersey, the 4th to the 11th, and you're going to be there June 10th at Resorts in their Superstar Theater for the Bat Out of Hell live show. So can you talk to us? First of all, how does it feel to be part of the North to Shore Festival? Super cool. It's actually a, quite an honor to be one of the first artists announced and and asked to be a part of the festival. And uh, in Atlantic City, you know, I'm kind of a mainstay in Asbury Park. That's uh, where I'm from. And and in Monmouth County and Osher County in particular, I've been really supported by the arts and the community, which has allowed me to get on the road and tour the country. And, uh, you know, I've been I've played in about 40 states or so and wow. uh, countless cities. I've lost count, but um, you know, to be able to do these really big productions in New Jersey and especially Atlantic City, where entertainment is, you know, the high expectations, yeah. um, you know, it's it's really special. And 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 I think they uh, were really uh, kind of them and smart of them to say, let's let's showcase all of the types of art that we have here and music that we have in the state in many ways. So it's an honor to be down there. And I'm really excited for June 10th. Yeah, and it is pretty cool because we do get to see some of the local artists that we probably would not have seen otherwise. But I mean, the fact that you're from Asbury Park, that is cool. Have you always been a performer your whole life? Yeah, yeah, I, I grew up, um, you know, really into pop culture and and television and hosts and, you know, front men and women and and things like that. And these, you know, larger than life personalities. And then I, I uh, started to write music and do musical theater. So I... I, I kind of uh, had many outlets to sing and perform, and it really wasn't until about uh, uh, you know all, about eight years ago or so that I created this stage moniker, Remember Jones, okay. and uh, bridged the two influences together. Put my you know bands that I had and my musical theater experiences together as one, and and then after that I had a career and it was cool, and and people started to see what I was doing as something unique and uh captivating in a in a different way so uh, i i feel like i've edged you know my niche thing into the into the business and and have been working and it's it's been really really uh really cool it's been really cool sounds cool so the bat out of hell live that's meatloaf so talk to us about that where did that inspiration come from do you only do meatloaf yeah so i um you know i'm a i'm an artist so i i have my own music and my own projects and i do many uh events sort of like this okay. um and and have done even in atlantic city uh, a few years ago did a queen show and uh the queen show is called yes queen mm -hmm. and uh it's super fun and and quirky and queer and funky and um it, it allows you to hear the music that you are familiar with or or have seen in kind of a new way almost like a new concept and and re re-energizing the music so i've done that with queen i have an amy winehouse show that i've done in you know, all over the country and uh, uh a few other artists we just did joe cocker's mad dogs and englishmen uh at uh, a few cities but we also did it at bethel woods the original woodstock location oh, cool. so i've kind of been all over doing these things and my bat out of hell live show was new last year to um, celebrate the life of Meatloaf and Jim Steinman, who wrote all the music. Um, they both passed within a year of each other. And people have been likening the theatricality of the music and performances of Meatloaf to me since I'm a kid. Okay. Um, you know, when I was in high school, I was almost 400 pounds. I, I kind of had this, you know, big voice, big entertainer, big thing where everybody said, oh, Meatloaf, you know. Okay. And uh they were they were spot on. I mean, it was music that always inspired me. And my shows are always larger than life, always big. And that's kind of what the Meatloaf and Jim Steinman thing was. You know, there's a song, Everything Louder Than Everything Else. I mean, it's just getting bigger and louder and crazier. And and uh, it's captivating. And that's what I really like as a front man. So we're doing Battle of the Hell Live June 10th. Yeah. Uh, you know, last year we did it. We had Max Weinberg on drums. Cool. Um, which was amazing. Obviously, he can't join us this year because he's busy on the road mm -hmm. uh, with the E Street Band. But he um, played the album in the studio in 1977. He was the drummer on most of the Bad Out of Hell album, and it was his oh. first time playing it um, live. Was with me and and 
uh, quite an honor. So it's it's exciting to be able to do this again this year and um, and bring it to new audiences and bring it out on the road. Yeah, it's so cool. I mean, it's funny because one of my favorite songs is Paradise by the Dashboard Light. <laughs> yes, of I love that song. And not a lot of people do. They're like, oh, no, nine minutes of, oh, gosh. <laughs> when you're sitting in like a karaoke bar or something and it comes on and you hear the guitar at the beginning, you're like, oh, no. Uh, exactly. <laughs> but when, you know, I experienced this with audiences um, who, you know, we do the album in full. We do it from the beginning to the end. And then we do a lot of other meatloaf songs, anything for love, but I won't do that. And I love and that song too. It's all coming back to me now, which uh, Celine Dion made famous, yes. but was written by Jim Steinman, who wrote all of this music. And Meatloaf did release his own version of that at one point too. So, uh, you know, you get a full show, a ninety-minute, two-hour show, and then um, you know, Paradise by the Dashboard Light is kind of like this midpoint where everybody <laughs> just jumps out of their seat. <laughs> And, and uh, they can't wait. The, the way they sing along and 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 uh, you feel the joy in people's, you know, nostalgia within that song or, you know, it takes everybody to a certain place. And it's it's really cool. Good. I, I'm glad that there's other people like me out there who love that. <laughs> no, everyone, the whole audience. These are a couple of times during the song where I stop singing and just let the audience let go. Let the audience but, do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we, you know, we do these theatrical performances of every song. So there's the songs are storytelling and, and have theater in them already. So to be able to see this like staged version, it's not a musical. We're doing a concert, but mm -hmm. it's staged in the way that you would, you know, like a an arena show or one of your you know favorite touring artists doing some kind of conceptual thing around their music. That's how this show is staged. That is so awesome. I can't yeah. wait to see it. And it's so great that it's part of the North to Shore Festival because they are highlighting all these great people throughout all the state of New Jersey and Atlantic City gets a full week of artists and music, yep. and all kinds of cool things. And the fact that you're going to be at resorts, the first casino, you're going to be at the Superstar Theater on June 10th uh, is a great thing. But also people need to know to get their tickets because it's going to sell out. <laughs> yeah, for sure. This is, you know, it's a hot ticket and it's exciting and um, it's great for a night out in Atlantic City, too. You know, you could uh, you go out to eat, do the Hell casino, yeah. walk that boardwalk and come and see a show that will definitely have you entertained. There's not a boring moment at all, I promise. And That's even if you're not a fan of, of Bad Out of Hell or you don't really know it, I think this is a great opportunity to be introduced to it and yeah. be introduced to uh, you know, 15 artists on stage. Uh, you know, it's a big band. We've got creators and designers and everyone behind the scenes. This is this is a way to support New Jersey artists for sure. That's great. And you've worked with so many great people. You've worked with Bruce Springsteen, George Clinton, uh, even Southside Johnny and the Asbury Jukes, like everybody from uh, the whole gamut. Well, do you have any fun behind the scenes stories? Uh, you know, I I did a show with Ronnie Spector. Um, who, you know, passed recently as well. And um, she was a fan of what, uh, you know, I do on stage and, and my persona and stuff. And she was very particular about um, who she would meet and see before a show. And uh, there's a great photo of her and I standing together. And what no one knows is it's like two seconds before she walked on the stage or something. But she, you know, kind of kept herself, she, you know, was older and 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 had some ailments and things like that. So she kind of kept herself in her dressing room until she would just walk out on the stage. But she made a point to say, I want to meet Anthony and, and oh, that's my real name. Uh, you know, <laughs> I, <remember. laughs> yeah, I want to meet Remember. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I want to make sure we do it. And it was really special to know that, you know, she was like, definitely let's make this happen. And, uh, you know, she would write me on Instagram and things like that and always connected cool. me after that so i mean i i could probably write a book of my stories um a, you know great time sharing the stage with bruce springsteen and and uh you know have opened for darlene love and 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 you know it's just really it's honored it's an honor to be alongside these legends who recognize that what i'm doing is uh on my way up to that point too which is really cool did you ever meet meet love I actually haven't. Uh, you know, I did see Meatloaf live mm -hmm. um, a few times, and I was always a fan, of course. Um, and I, you know, was a really big fan of Jim Steinman, and and I, I have since met some people who have been involved in their circles and and okay. people that knew them and in, in and out of the band. And I think people who uh, have acknowledged that I am from the same sort of credo, you know, the same. Uh, Mm -hmm. you know, I'm family to what was going on in that yeah. way too. So I think if, if I would have met Milo for Jim Steinman, it would have been a 
kind of a, a natural thing, but I, I'm, I'm honored to be able to celebrate the music and, and translate it in a way that I feel like, uh, you know, people don't get to see too often. You know, this is, this is definitely not a, an I'm not a, and the next song is type of performer. You know, it's definitely attention to detail, um, you know, full theatricality. We have a 15 piece band that moves the whole time. I mean, everybody's you know completely wireless and staged and fun and, and, uh, you know, that's that's definitely the meatloaf and Jim Steinman thing. Theater, you know, give, give us rock and roll theater. Rock and roll is theater, in my opinion. The, the looks, the outfits, the sound, everything. Well, when you um, think meatloaf, you think theatrics, you think big and, you know, larger than life. So it's great that you're bringing that to life on stage. Yeah, for sure. We have people, you know, in, in other cities that have done the show say, you know, I thought I was just coming to see a concert or a tribute show, but I actually was given like a almost a Broadway experience, <laughs> okay, which, is, which is really cool. And that's the point. So I don't love to say it's just a tribute. I mean, it is, but it's it's more than that, more. you know, mm -hmm. definitely. And just really fast, you know, for up and coming artists, not everybody gets to be on stage with Bruce Springsteen. Not everybody gets to travel around the world and have their own show. What advice would you give to somebody who's in your shoes that wants that, wants to be able to travel and be with these big time people on stage? I think it's important for everybody to um, know that it's not easy and it's and it doesn't really come naturally. You know, it's it, it takes a lot of time and work. I don't think I ever expected in my life, I don't scare anyone, but I don't think I expected in my life that... I'd be, um, you know, a manager and 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 all of these other things uh, more than I actually get the opportunity to perform. You know, it's as a leader and a band leader and a director and a visionary type. You know, it takes a lot of effort and energy and and emotional, physical, financial uh, struggles to to get to the stage and get it going. So I think uh, I think everybody. You know, if you have this passion and you you feel like you're an artist and you don't know how to do it, it's good to be a part of other people's things. It's good to learn and and ask questions and ask for help and and take those classes and and meet those people and and work yourself from from the bottom up. Because if you don't really know that struggle and that hustle of what it takes to do all of that work, it's really not easy to maintain it as you're doing the work. Uh, you know, the hustle is always there. And, and to humble yourself to know I came from nothing and yeah. made this happen is is rewarding for everyone around you. That's great. And and how did you come up with the name Remember Jones? Uh, so there's actually a, a, a kind of an interesting story about it. There is another singer songwriter with my name. Oh. And we kind of, uh, you know, people were booking one and getting the other for uh, <laughs> a couple of years. Yeah, and <laughs> Oh, it still happens. I still have people come to my shows and say, oh, I saw you here. And I was like, that was not me, <laughs> uh, which is odd because we're very different. And uh, he's an amazing uh, kind of folk Americana artist. And I do this kind of crazy soulful rock and roll thing. And uh, I just decided to to give myself that theatrical presence that so many of the people I love have been able to do over time. I mean, Freddie Mercury, Tina Turner, um, Lady Gaga, you know, these are are kind of brand names that they put to what they do and bring to the table. And it allows them to be anyone and anything at any time. And uh, remember Jones is that for me. I kept saying, I want something people are going to remember. And uh, I don't say, well, that's a cool first name. I don't think anybody <laughs> has that. And uh, Jones just came to me as, you know, not only the act of jonesing, you know, it's, you know, kind of th this need or want or feeling towards something. It felt very nostalgic to me. It felt very um, music name the you know oh. quincy jones sharon jones tom jones who i love uh and it just kind of rolled off the tongue and i saw it as you know and this is something for young artists too and anyone is an artist i saw it as a brand i saw it as uh you know something that i could see on a shirt or i could see on a sign and and something that i felt this pull towards and, and i just went with my gut and uh so did audiences i mean i'm still on the come up and i'm still growing and people are still learning about me every day but uh, it's 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 fun to have this kind of uh, thing that go, goes along with what I put on stage. That's so cool. Well, I love that. And I know that we can find more information about you at rememberjones.com. I've got original music. I've got three albums that are available all over the place. And um, you can get me on Instagram at rememberjones because that's a lot of fun. And, uh, <laughs> you know, always sharing fun stuff and always doing really quirky things. It's great to see the behind the scenes of how you know, 15 piece band gets together on stage. So uh, Instagram and you know, the website are the spots for that. 
That's actually really good to know because people love behind the scenes. Because of the travel logistics and everything we're doing all over the place and the relationships we have, you know, I work on stuff a year in advance. So I'm doing something today, but having a conversation about something for next year. I know, it's, it's, crazy. It, it's the only way to kind of keep it growing and, and keep it fulfilling. And and uh, I'm very lucky and fortunate to be a part of of the business, but also part of North Shore Festival because they recognize what I do, which is great. That's right. And I cannot wait to see you. So you're going to be at Resorts Casino in the Superstar Theater Saturday, June 10th, which is part of the North to Shore Festival, which is coming to Atlantic City the 4th to the 11th of June. But it's a whole month long of all kinds of creativity and artists and people in different smaller venues to bigger venues throughout Asbury Park, Newark and Atlantic City. But it does kick off in Atlantic City. So guys, check that out from June 4th to the 11th. And remember Jones. I was going to say, remember, remember Jones. (laughs) Can't forget. Can't forget. (laughs) It's going to be Saturday, June 10th. Thank you so much. Remember Jones. I appreciate you. We can't wait to see you and just keep on glowing and doing what you're doing. Right back at you. Thank you so much. Hope to see you soon. Thank you.